Hey guys, what's up? JK with Pawn Reboot here on my way back from the gym. Today I'd like to talk about two fears which are actually rooted in lies that we tell ourselves about our addiction. And you could say it's also more about sex. And the first one is that you're never going to have sex if you're a virgin or if you're not a virgin. The lie that you're never going to have the type of sex that you want. And the second lie is that more sex is good for you. Like having more sexual experiences, having more varied partners is a good thing for you. So let's address the first one, which is for those of you, whether you're in a relationship or not, regardless of how many sexual partners you've had, regardless of whether you've had sex in your life or not, the lie of you're never going to have sex or you're never going to have enough sex. For those of you who are virgins, the first thing I want you to know is that you're gonna get laid, okay? You are going to have sex at some point. <laughs> By default, you know, there are a lot of guys out there who are incels, involuntarily <laughs> celibate. And I sympathize with y'all because I used to be like that in my early 20s. But I will tell you, the only thing that's going to keep you there is becoming part of an incel or some sort of black pill community. That's going to fuck you up. That's the only thing that's going to ensure that you never get laid. As long as you're doing two very simple things. As long as you're doing your best to improve yourself physically, in terms of your looks, in terms of your ambition and where you want to be in life, just your situation in life, and you're working on your social skills, either by finding a niche or a community that works for you, that obviously has women, or you're putting yourself in a career or social situations that kind of push you, or situations that push you to be a little bit more social, if you do those two things, you're gonna get laid eventually and I want you to believe that there is a woman out there who finds you attractive who will have sex with you okay <laughs> personally that lie was destroyed for me when I lost my virginity and I lost my virginity by accident literally by accident I just happened to be going to bars all the time total loser barely any social skills but I like to dance and this girl was a foreign exchange student who had come to the States and it was her first night out at a club. And we just happened to end up dancing together. And that was back when game in the club was walk up to a girl and start grinding with her, you know? Man, that was like what, early 2000s? Started dancing with her, made out. She got my number, she texted me she came over to my place the next day and I told my roommate like man I think I think this is it this is gonna happen and it did but she was dominant she was aggressive and we had sex and the moment that I had sex that fear of I'll never ever have sex passed now the next step is for guys who've had sex but because it was something that they had a lot of fear around and they were afraid that they would never have sex, when you go through a dry spell and you don't have any sex, well, that fear comes back that you're never going to have that sort of sex again. Some men also have sex with women whom they don't find particularly attractive and over time, they start developing this fear that they're never going to have sex with attractive women. And in many cases, when you watch a lot of pornography, you, you develop this unrealistic sense of entitlement where you feel that you deserve to have sex with women who are on par with the physical attractiveness of uh, porn stars, which for many men is just not realistic. And 
they are not women that look like porn stars physically or who even act like porn stars just walking around every day so you start developing that fear that fear is not real that fear is not real at all again if you simply put yourself out there it's only a matter of time and effort of course before you get laid the second lie is the lie that you need to have more exciting and more varied sexual experiences and this lie is particularly relevant to men who are in committed relationships or men who are married and you're in a relationship and you have compulsive behavior with masturbation and pornography, well, your tastes are obviously going to change. And the more you watch pornography, the more this sort of sex is normalized in your life. And you start getting dissatisfied with your relationship. You start thinking that perhaps you are deserving of whatever you're watching in pornography. And the reality is, your sexual life and your relationship should be exciting. It should be varied, but it should not be dictated by pornography. It should not be dictated by a marketing machine, which is literally designed for you to spend money and consume more and more of it. If you want to be in a long-term relationship, committed relationship, that relationship is not going to last unless it is based on intimacy. If it's also based on mind-blowing sex, that's awesome, great for you, it should be, in fact. But the intimacy has to be there. And sometimes the sexual experience in that relationship is more than the intimacy. And your job, your challenge in the relationship for both of you, you and your partner, is to start working on that intimacy. And in another video, I'll talk about the three different types of sex that we have in a relationship. But the deepest level involves intimacy. And that's how you end up in a loving, committed relationship where intimacy and sex are blended together. And that takes an investment of time and emotions and vulnerability. It's not something you're going to be willing to give up easily. So if you find yourself just looking at your partner and going like, man, this is not enough. You know, I have a high sex drive. I'm a freak. I need more. And she's a nice, she's a nice woman. She doesn't want to try all these things. I suggest you try giving pornography a break. You're like a break for how long, bro? Break for a year and a half to two years. And working on the intimacy in your relationship. If you're not willing to put in that work, well, that's where my work with you ends. <laughs> you're gonna go have to. You're gonna have to go see a marriage counselor <laughs> for that if you're not willing to put in the work. Because here at Porn Reboots. We work, we work hard. So to summarize, two of the fears that we have that are based on lies are that we're never gonna have sex, we're gonna be 40 year old virgins or virgins forever, or that we're never going to have the type of sex that we want. And the second one is that more is not good for you. More intimate sex is good for you, but more freaky pornography based sex is not for you if you're struggling with an out of control behavior with pornography and masturbation so this is just an impromptu video guys i'm just talking off the top of my head i kind of pick things that clients bring up to me during the week so if you have any questions you want some clarity or you have some thoughts on that please do share them in the comment section below. I'll respond today. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle, and I'll see you at the brighter side of this journey.